about fifth to seventh grade on learning the phases of matter. Uh, apparently, there's a little bit of difference throughout the years. I'm technically Mr. Langford. I don't like that, though, because that's my dad's name. I'm Miss Stark. And I'm Miss Derner. Okay. Today we're learning about the phases of matter. Before, before we go into that, I want to know what you guys know about the phases, uh, of, of anything about matter. What do you know about matter? Out. What are the phases of solid? Solid. Good. And it doesn't have to be the phases either. It can be anything about matter that you know. Go ahead. Matter is what makes up like... True. Almost everything. Almost. But correct. But like all like physical things. It's true. Uh, what else? Anything else? You got more? Uh, yeah. Is a liquid one? Liquid mm -hmm. is a state of matter, that's correct. Can anyone tell us what the third is? It's okay if you can't. Yeah, just, yeah, just if we yep. can. Gas. Gas, yep. Good job. Okay. okay. The basic definition of matter is that it has to be physical. It's anything physical within the universe. It has to be made of atoms and molecules, and this is the one thing that differentiates it from the other thing in the universe called energy. And it has to be able to be interacted with weighed, and observed. Okay. So this is stemming off the homework that you guys did from the other night. We're going to do a little bit of a review before we start the actual lesson. So some background to where we're going. <laughs> Alright, so just shout out what the answer is. So in blank, water in the air turns to liquid water. Evaporation. What? Evaporation. Yeah, it's right. Bingo! Read, read the sentence and choose the word that fits. A physical change like freezing is blank. Can you please Reversible, freeze, properties, or chemical change? Chemical change. Chemical change. Reversible. That's the one! Read the definition and choose the word that matches. <laughs> Qualities used to describe an object, condensation, chemical change, properties, or freeze. Properties. <laughs> Properties. Yes, read the sentence and choose the word that fits. The blank of water into the air makes the water an invisible gas. Evaporation. Evaporation. Bingo! Read the sentence and choose the word that fits. You can blank the shape of bread by slicing it. Physical change, condensation, alter, or reversible. Bingo! Read the sentence and choose the word that fits. If you light a candle, its wax will blank. Condensation, melt, freeze, or chemical change. Melt. Melt. Yes, read the sentence and choose the word that fits. Burning paper is a blank. Chemical change, freeze, evaporation, properties. Chemical change. Read the definition and choose the word that matches. To change matter from a liquid to a solid, condensation, freeze, alter, evaporation. Freeze. Freeze. Yes! Read the sentence and choose the word that fits. Cutting paper is a blank. Physical change, reversible, properties, or chemical change. Awesome job! So this was an activity to kind of show us where we need more work, where we needed less work, what we kind of had, and then we're going to use that to bridge into our lesson. Okay. I want a couple of examples of each one. Who list off a couple of solids? Just shout them out, that's fine. Clay. Clay. Clay, yes. Clay is one. Another one? Let's get one more. Sorry, what was that? Ice. Ice. Ice, Ice is also one. Uh, table. A couple of people knocked on the table. Pencils. Okay, what are a couple of examples of liquid? Water. Water. Rain, also water. What else? <laughs> uh, what else? Soda. Yeah. Soda is one. Uh, water falls in a lot of them, but the milk, stuff like that. And then gases. Finally, what are some gases? CO2. CO2, CO2. oxygen. Nothing. 
carbon dioxide. Okay, the first one we're going to talk about is solids. Pitch your ice cube it was uh, water before it was cool. And what defines a solid? Why is a solid different from those other things that you listed? It has a form, really. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Is it keeps its own shape. If you place it somewhere and you put it into whatever shape it needs to be, and you place it somewhere, it'll stay inside that shape. It'll keep that shape. The reason for this is that the molecules in solids are right next to each other and they hold themselves together. And it also, interestingly enough, uh, means that they can't be compressed. That's, that's not a blanket statement. They can be compressed a little bit, but after a while they just become so solid that you can't compress them anymore. Okay. Melting point of a cat is 105.6 degrees. <laughs> okay. How does it change phases? Melting. Melting. Correct. It melts. Different things have different melting points. Ice has a different melting point from a table, has a different melting point from rock. So what's the, what's the melting point for ice? Does anybody know the specific melting point? 32. Yeah. It is actually 32. It's right on that line of where it freezes and where it melts and it goes in between. Chocolate? When does chocolate melt? So give me a random... <laughs> Hold it in your hand. How warm is your body? 90, yeah, it, it melts around 90 degrees. That's why you can keep it in a, te in a room temperature room, and it won't melt. But if you keep it in like your car, it gets all over your dashboard. And you have to clean it back for yourself. How about a rock? Different types of rocks. Melt at extremely high temperatures. Yeah, it's, it's technically anywhere from a few hundred degrees to a few thousand degrees, depending on the rock. If you have a rock with lead in it, it's only a couple hundred degrees. If you have a rock with silicone, yeah, silicone oh, yeah. <laughs> granite rocks, they'll melt at a much higher temperature than one that is made out of a softer metal. And when it turns, when, when it melts, what does it turn into? Yeah. No, it can. That's not. So our second phase of matter is going to be liquid. So I know we already did this, so if we can think of some different um, examples of a liquid. Does anyone have anything else? Magma. Magma. That's good. Um, oil. Stuff like that. So just things that you don't think of every day can also be examples of liquids. Um, so as opposed to a solid which has very little space and can't move around, the formation of particles within a liquid, it's still tightly packed but there is going to be little pockets of space which allows for the particles to move freely. So, given that we now know that, do you think that this formation of particles allows for a rigid structure of water, or do you think that water can kind of change its form and do different things and like move around objects? What do you think would happen? Yeah, so it, it's very loose, it can be formed, and it can do different things. So, liquids have three main properties, and to kind of give a visual example of the first, I'm going to ask you guys what happens when you pour grape juice out of a container into a cup. Do you think it'll stay in the shape of the container that you're pouring it from, or take the shape of the cup that you're going to pour it into? Mm -hmm. So, now that we can see it's no longer as thick as the water bottle is, and it's kind of more narrow and upright, what do you think will happen if I pour it into a smaller, kind of elongated form? Is it going to stay like this, or will it go to this form? Yep, exactly. So. That alludes to what our first uh, property of water is, is that, or not water, liquids, is that it will always assume the shape of the container that it's in. Always. And then our second one is that water isn't super easy to compress. So um, a way that I would think about this is if you are in a bath and you squeeze a sponge, is the water going to stay in your fingertips? And are you going to be able to hold it in your hand? Or is it kind of going to flow out and go into the bathtub and make a mess everywhere? It's going to make a mess everywhere. That's because um, water, unlike a solid, it's not easy to compress. So if you push a solid together really hard, is it, going to, is it going to go everywhere? Most likely not. It'll stay in the shape that it's already in. But because of the small spaces that are in between um, the particles and the liquid, it actually makes it so that water can flow easily, which is our third property of a liquid, 
is that liquids always flow easily, so they're not going to stay in one place if you remove the object that's blocking it. So, aside from a waterfall, can you guys think of any examples <coughs> of flowing liquids? River. <coughs> River. I know we were talking about magma later or earlier. That's an example of what would be flowing. So when a volcano erupts, magma is going to flow down and around the other objects. So, yeah. So that's liquids. <coughs> The third phase of matter that we're going to talk about is gases. Can you think of any gases? Yeah. Oxygen, chloride. Mm -hmm. Yep. What gases make up air? The four most common ones in air, what do you think they are? Carbon in carbon dioxide. Hydrogen, not one of the four most common. Nitrogen. Nitrogen, oxygen. <laughs> all right, we got all but one. Nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and argon are the four most common gases in the air that we breathe in. What do you think gas looks like? A lot of them are invisible. Steam you can see. Yeah, steam is one that you can see. Some gases have colors, but some you can't see because they're just flying around so fast and they're so tiny. You think there's a lot of molecules or a few? So if this container holds this much water, do you think it holds more molecules of gas or more of water? More of water. More of water, yep. Are they close together or are they spread out? Yeah. Spread out, yeah. Is it a strong attraction between them or weak attraction? Weak. weak, yeah. A lot of energy or a little energy? Yeah, a lot of energy because they're all moving around so fast. So this is what gases look like. You can see the little lines are them bouncing off of everything. They just bounce off and go crazy, kind of like kindergartners. Gases diffuse when you take off the lid or open the container. What do you think that means? They spread out? Yeah. So this is a sealed up container and these are our little gas molecules. So when they're flying around in there with the lid on, they're stuck, right? What happens when I take the lid off? <laughs> it all got away. So diffusion is spreading out into whatever space is available. They just got as far away as they could all over. Can you grab air? Can you hold it? Yeah. <laughs> you can hold it. You have the right type of utensils. Okay, what kind of utensils hold air? Yeah, yeah. Why can't we hold it in our hands? <laughs> yeah, you just can't keep it sealed tight enough, right? They're just moving too fast. We can't catch them. So this is what, ga what gas molecules look like in the air. They're kind of spread out, and we can't really catch them. They're too far apart, and they move too fast. But a balloon can hold air, right? When you blow up a balloon, that's what makes it get big. Why can a balloon hold air? Yeah, and we're able to form a seal at the end of that balloon, right, that traps all the air in there. So that little line at the end of the balloon doesn't let those air molecules escape. They just bounce all off the inside of the balloon instead of getting away, right? Okay, so we are going to watch a video that's kind of going to go over everything that we had, and then at the end of it, there's going to be a kind of review activity that we're going to do as a class, and I'll explain that when we get to that portion of it. Yeah. 
So, you know a little about the three most common states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Can you find some words that describe some of those phases? Choose the verbs that describe what can be done with the liquid. Hit done when you think you found all the best action words. Okay, so I'm just going to put my mouse over it, and if you think that it does explain it, then say yes, and if you don't, then say no. And we'll just get a general consensus. Splash. Yes. yes. <laughs> Ooze. No. Hold. Yes. Snuggle. No. Flow. Yes. Pour. Yes. Throw. No. Hammer. No. Squirt. Yes. Swim. Yes. Smell. No. I don't know. So if, if some of them do, do you think we should count that as a yes or a no? Because it can go either way. It's an opinion. Yes. 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 Okay. Dry. No. Spray. Yes. yes. Knock. No. Walk. No. Spill. Yes. yes. Drift. Yes. Pet. No. Eat. No. Drink. Yes. yes. Done. Okay. Now see if you can choose adjectives that describe different solids. Hit done when you think you found all the best describing words. Ready? Hard. Yes. Stringy. Yes. Gooey. Yes. No. 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 Tightly packed. Yes. Well, that one's really important. Soft. Yes. Fluffy. Yes. Airy. No. Rough. Yes. Rubbery. Sorry. <laughs> Bumpy. Yes. Splashy. Yeah. Smooth. Yes. Wet. Crinkly. Yes. Wet. No. Melted. No. Sturdy. Yes. Bouncy. Yes. Drippy. No. Invisible. No. Crunchy. Yes. Done. So. Let's make a T-chart out of your words and save it in your notebook. We'll put adjectives describing solids on one side and verbs describing what liquids can do on the other. So this Save is, this. <laughs> so this is going to be really useful. So when we're going back and we're reviewing for our test, and just in general, if you want to look back on it and kind of review it, this will forever be saved in our classroom notebook. So we can access this whenever we want to or whenever we need it. Save. Well, as my good friend Freddie always says, whether a stringy solid or liquid pouring, the states of matter are never boring. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go ahead and take those worksheets that are on your desk and flip them over. Everybody should have a pen or pencil or something you can write with. <coughs> under a microscope. So draw what the molecules would look like. It's right up there. When you're finished drawing your solid, put your hand on top of your head. When a solid melts, it turns into a what? Liquid. 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 The next circle is a liquid. Draw what that would look like under a microscope.
When you're finished drawing your liquid, stand on one foot. All right. Take a seat if your liquid looks like that. <laughs> All right. So what ways is a liquid different than a solid? They have more three. Yeah, so there's more space in between the particles. Anything else? No? Right. When we get tons of space between them, what does that make it? Gas. A gas, yes. In the third circle, draw what a gas would look like under a microscope. When you're finished with that, stick out your tongue. <laughs> All right. And that's what a gas would look like under a microscope. Now in those big, long columns, we're going to write some words that will help us remember what each one of these are. So what are some words that we use to describe solids? Hard. Hard. Rough. 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 Yeah. Bouncy. It's rubbery. 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 Throwable. Tight together, tightly packed. Crunchy. Crunchy. Smooth. Smooth. Sharp. Sharp could work, yeah. Okay, let's go on to liquids. What are some words that we use to describe liquids? Splash. Splash. Oops. Wet. Wet. Squirt. Squirt. Spill. Spill. You guys are good. What can we do with liquids? Drink. Drink. Swim. Swim. Is that all you can think of? Shower. <laughs> Shower. Yeah. Super Hopefully. <laughs> yes, please do that. <laughs> all right. And what are some words that we can use to describe gases? <laughs> Invisible. <laughs> Not cold. If solids are dense. <laughs> Yeah. Odorous, <laughs> that works. So I think one of the really important things to know about gases that for me helps me remember it a lot is that in terms of gases compared to liquids, the, or really all of them, there's the most space between particles in the gases, liquids have the second most spaces in between particles, and solids are tightly packed, so there's no space in between those particles. So I think that would be really important to write down on your review sheet. And then, which one of these three, which particles move the fastest? Gas. Yes. Yes. Which one are the slowest? Yep. Which ones have the highest temperature? Gases. Why? Why do you think that would be? There's so much energy with them moving around. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. Energy is heat. So then, which ones have the lowest energy? Solid. Solid. Mm-hmm. All right. So we're gonna hold up a few things. If you think it is. A solid, raise your right hand. If you think it is a liquid, raise your left hand. If you
you think it is a gas, nod your head. Yes. <laughs> What's in here? Oh. oh. <laughs> yes. How about what's in here? All right. Good job, guys. I think you've got it. Great. That's, that's all we got for you guys.